Hey everyone, welcome to Our Small Footprint. I have a video today. I wanted to show you how I make my beeswax food wraps. I did intend to talk during the video and like actually do an instructional video, but it was not to be, not with children and dogs and everything else and a time sensitive kind of a task where I couldn't just stop and start and things like that. So voiceover it is. Uh, the project didn't go as well as I would like, partly because when I started the project I knew where a paintbrush was but when I went to find the paintbrush it was no longer there. So I had to use a silicon pastry brush and it does not work as well. But they, I got, half, got four or five of them done and they're working and they will work for the meantime until I get myself a new paintbrush to make some more in bulk. So this is how I make mine. There is many different methods around to do them and this is how I managed to do mine. I've done it before. They worked better before with a proper paintbrush but they still worked fine this time. So. I hope it gives you some tips on how they're done and gives you inspiration to give your own a go. They are great. Uh, I still love my cling wrap even though I shouldn't use it and I try really hard not to use it but some things it just works so well for which is just a bit sad. So I will slowly eventually slowly stop buying things like cling wrap and won't have a choice as to what to use and then once that's the case we will figure out how to use these even better uh, because you'll be forced to use it, which is partly how we become more self-sufficient. You stop buying the things that you rely on and you start having to rely on the things that you didn't before and you figure it out. So enjoy, uh, leave me any questions and comments in the, in the comments below. And uh, if you've got any tips to try and figure it out, then let me know too. But I'm pretty happy with how they turned out, even if the project was a little less polished than I'd like. So first up, uh, you have to get together some beeswax. Now I bought this great big lump of beeswax because I bought it in bulk for making salves and all sorts of things with. So I just shaved bits off it for using. Now it's not the easiest way if you bought it in the little pelleted type beeswax that would definitely be an easier way to go. But I did manage to get what I needed from this so I just shaved chunks off each bit until it got too hard, rotated and kept chunking, cutting chunks off. So I needed to get 100 grams of the beeswax shaved or the little pellets if that's what you're using. So you just need 100 grams of beeswax into a heat proof jar because we're going to be melting this. So the jar needs to be heat proof. I'm using a decor style Pyrex style jug here but you could use a double boiler or uh, I don't imagine you can do it in a microwave, not very easily. It has to be a constant heat, but I'm not sure about that. But something glass that you can put over a pot or that you can put inside hot water. So Pyrex, that sort of thing is my suggestion. To the 100 grams of beeswax, you want to add 30 grams of pine resin. The smaller the resin is, the better, because it's not the easiest thing to melt. So if it's not all crushed up, I recommend bashing it a few times with a rolling pin or something to crush it right up and then adding it to your beeswax. So you want 30 grams of that added to your mix. And then you want to add three tablespoons of jojoba oil or jojoba oil, however you want to pronounce it. There's a little bit of a, you know, discussion on which way is correct. So I'm using a half tablespoon measure here. So I did six of those. So three full tablespoons of jojoba oil into your wax and resin mix. After that, you want to transfer it to a pot of water. So you want the water in the pot to be higher than the level of the wax that you're putting in your jar. And I did forget to mention here that I've got a ring from a mason jar underneath this uh, jug so that it's just very slightly above the bottom of the pot so the glass isn't resting on the bottom of the pot. Now you use cotton fabric for these so a lightweight cotton fabric is best. I have used a couple of different types here to give you a look but a lightweight cotton is good so this is just a standard quilting cotton. You want to use pinking shears which are the ones that cut on a zigzag and you want to cut out your squares at the size that you want. Now I just grabbed a couple of items that I regularly use the beeswax wraps on bowls and jars and cut them according to that. I didn't measure them. My lines are not straight. I did straighten some up afterwards but they're 
I didn't go measuring anything because these are purely for home use for me and it really wasn't that relevant. So we cut out your squares or rectangles or whatever shapes you want using the patterns of the fabric or not. It's entirely up to you. Use your pinking shears to cut it so you've got that zigzag edge which is going to hinder the fraying of the fabric because woven cottons like this will fray. So by using the pinking shears it helps with that fraying that it happens and then cut them out to the relevant sizes. So just like here, if you've got jars and bottles and that that you want to use it specifically on, then put them there. I could probably cut these squares a little bit tighter than I did, but I wanted them to be a little bit more diverse for what I could use them for, whether they were on bowls or jars and that sort of thing. So just cut out as many as you want to use at a time. This bit of, um, this amount of wax can do quite a few, but my weather's pretty cold at the moment, so it hardens up pretty quick. So I didn't want to do too many at a time. I also had kids running rampant, so it was just easier to do not too many. So once you've cut your pieces of fabric out, you then need to get some baking paper or nonstick paper, or you could use uh, newspaper if you get newspaper. We don't get newspaper here, so that wasn't really an issue, and put your pieces of fabric out on it. Your wax is going to be sitting in that simmering water trying to melt. Now the beeswax melts at a lot lower temperature than the pine resin. So you'll find that the beeswax will melt but your pine resin will go into sort of like a gluggy gluey mess in the bottom of the jar. I found that you have to really agitate it to get that pine resin to melt through the wax but you also have to turn the temperature up a bit. It needed to be at a sort of a hard simmer rather than a soft simmer for the resin to really uh, emulsify with that beeswax so I turned it up a bit and just kept on agitating it until I could get that pine resin to come apart because it ended up sort of like a, a taffy ball or a toffee like a, a candy ball in the middle of it rather than emulsifying with the rest of the wax so I had to agitate it a lot and had to turn the temperature up quite a bit just to get it to emulsify with the rest of the wax but it worked fine just took that little bit of extra effort to get it there so I recommend turning the temperature up that little bit I did consider that maybe putting the I have made these before but it was a while ago so I don't remember the process that I used last time but uh, I did consider melting the beeswax and then adding the pine resin sprinkled over the top of the beeswax once the beeswax was hot I thought maybe that would make it easier to get the rosin the resin to emulsify but I'm not sure on that that's just a you know a, a theoretical so once you've got it all emulsified then it's ready to go so you lay your fabric out on a protective surface I've got stainless steel benches so it's not really as important but for me uh, but for people who are using like wooden benches or tables then you don't really want to be trying to scrape wax off it you want to use it with a paintbrush to paint it on and now <laughs> I could not find a single paintbrush in my house after I started this project. So I'm using a silicon pastry brush and it really isn't right. It is putting a far too thick a coating. So I end up not even coating the whole thing because I know that it's going to end up with too much wax. So you want a, a sort of a fine bristled paintbrush, preferably uh, something that's kind of wide would be good because then you could just do one, two or three passes over each square of fabric rather than having to go backwards and forwards over the the different sections to try and get coverage. Uh, less is more is a a good key here and that this silicon brush definitely did not allow me to do that. So I painted on to try and cover most of the space making sure to agitate the wax to get the resin mixed through each time I dipped it in and then painted the surface of the fabric. Uh, the Once the surface all looked well covered then you need to place it in the oven. So you peel it off the protective sheet and place it on some baking paper um, on a baking tray. And you can see here that it's very thickly covered here. Uh, too much wax on this. Put it in the oven so that it has the opportunity to spread better. So you, while it's in the oven, it's going to spread all the way through. While that one's in the oven, paint the next one. Uh, as I said, less is more. A bristled paintbrush would be better. I'm working with what I have here. So you, once the other one's been in the oven, it only takes a few minutes, it comes out, you can see that it's well coated, it's spread out, the whole thing looks dark. I picked up some chunks of resin that had ended up on there, but you can see that it's, it's well covered, the whole piece is evenly covered now. But 
there's too much wax on it which is pretty it's pretty common even if you go easy on it so what you can do is you can use the next square of fabric that you're going to use to pat off some of the excess this is going to remove any dripping and things like that but as you can see there's a fair bit of wax left on the baking paper as well there was definitely a little bit of an excess of wax on these with this silicon brush definitely recommend not doing it with a silicon brush so i just went through the same process over and over again put the next sheet into the oven I patted it with the next one and so on and so forth. This can this uh, cream fabric with the print on it is a canvas, a lightweight canvas, which I wanted to test out the theory and see how it would work. Uh, it took the beeswax fine, the same as anything else, but it does take a little bit more effort to get it to mold around the lid of anything. It um, because it's more there's more stiffness to the fabric more fabric it doesn't fold as well around the rims of things so when you're trying to put your beeswax wraps on the surface of something you're using your own body heat to mold it to stick to the sides of the container and the canvas just isn't very forgiving i think it'll work perfectly on some really big bowls but i would definitely would avoid canvas for small size ones Though it might work really well for, some people use them for like sandwich wraps and things like that. So it might work really well as a folded where it's sticking to itself and it needs a bit more structure. Uh, I'm going to keep experimenting with it. I have plenty of that canvas fabric, so I used to make lunch bags out of it. Because of the temperature in my kitchen, the wax hardened up quite quickly. So what I'm going to do is this jug is now going to be a purely my wax jug. So I'm just going to leave it in this jug. I'm going to scrape down the sides, put some cling film or something or a beeswax wrap over it and leave it aside and the next time I'm doing this I can just reheat that jug and reuse the wax and resin that's already in there to add to the next lot of wax and stuff that I'm going to use. With this really large piece of fabric it was a bit large for the baking tray and when I pulled it out the first time there was a few spots that didn't have a whole lot of wax on them. So what I did was I just broke some bits of dried wax off the baking paper and placed it in the spots where it needed a little bit more. Ideally you'd have a paintbrush to be able to spread it around a little bit but the silicon paintbrush it doesn't work quite well and also it was very gummed up with dried wax at this point. So, but you can sprinkle little bits of those on. And some people who make the beeswax wraps who only make them with beeswax, they don't like to add all the additives. They just grate the beeswax over the top of it and then put it in the oven and let the oven do the work. Uh, I don't, that wouldn't work with the resin, the resin because the resin takes too much to um, melt. So it wouldn't melt evenly on there though. I suppose if you sprinkled it, left it in there long enough and then perhaps use the brush to spread it around. I'm not sure whether that would work. It's not something I've tried. Once I had finished doing them all and had them all hanging, what I did was I just laid the two pieces of baking paper on top of each other so that that wax would set in the between the baking paper and I'm going to put that and store that with the jug so that it's there for next time rather than wasting it or anything else and then that way I will have it there for next time and ready to go. So once they've cooled they are ready to use. So you just as I said before, you're going to use your body heat. So what you do is you push it around the rim of whatever you're trying to put it on and you use the heat of your hands to get it to stick where it needs to go. So these little uh, turtle ones worked really well. This is I wanted this size for this size jar because I store my mayo and things like that in this size jar. And the Fowler's jars don't have great lids. They have these clip-on lids, but I hate them. They're not very good. So every now and again I have one of these jars that goes in the fridge one of these will be handy to go on there so you can tip it upside down everything it's got a it's got a good seal on it and all that sort of thing it's when you use them they end up with creases in them but you just change the position slightly for the next jar um, and eventually they may need re-waxing though these are very heavily waxed so ideally we want the wax to thin out a little bit because I've got too much wax on them which they will it, as it comes into contact with things and if you have a look at the jar here when this comes off there's a little bit of wax residue on the top of the jar as well because the wraps are just a little bit too heavily waxed I'm okay with it it's um it's just a little bit of a mark so there you go all done now to clean the beeswax wraps you just wipe them over with warm soapy water uh, you don't want to scrub at them because that's going to take the wax off you don't want to put them in a washing machine obviously because that would damage them as well so you want to make sure they don't get moldy either so you need to hang them in between you so that they have a chance to drip dry and dry thoroughly uh, the beeswax gives it a little bit of uh, 
waterproof or like it's not particularly water permeable but at the same time you still have to look after them I have had some go moldy uh, just because of our outdoor kitchen and things like that so be careful with them they take time to make the fabrics not exactly cheap so you know you want to look after them but they work for just about everything they're obviously not uh, liquid tight even if you get them as tight as possible you put too much weight behind them they will pop off so glass containers with lids are great for still for things that need to be watertight but we do love having them around and I do love being able to just stick them over a uh, bowl that I just want to leave for a little bit so uh, enjoy them and I will see you again in another couple of days thanks for watching